start. Firstly, I like that map of Fukushima. You know, the one which is a key titled Wave Height in Centimeters. Because it's got nothing to do with radiation at Fukushima. That's the wave height of the 2011 tsunami. Now, this is where Thunderfoot should have come out and said, there's lots of models of the dispersion in the ocean. How could you not find those models? How could you be that stupid to use a model of a tsunami when there's all kinds of models of the ocean out there? It's been reported on TV. Shortly after Abe's statement, the government revealed that approximately 300 tons of contaminated water were leaking from Fukushima's crippled nuclear reactors on a daily basis. This graphic shows the gradual contamination of the Pacific Ocean due to leaks of radioactive water from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. The simulation, which was run by a German marine research institute, shows the entire Pacific water is being polluted by radioactive water in just six years. And it's endless models that he could have showed, right? And he, I guess he forgot. He's a scientist. He's really busy. He can't keep up with everything. Give him a break, okay? Experts say the cleanup is expected to take more than 40 years and cost 11 billion U.S. dollars. But I've got to admit, your second chart is truly terrifying, where the entire western half of the United States was subjected to 750 rads. That's seven and a half grays of radiation. Good call, Thunderfoot. Woo! Only problem is he was just showing that as a dispersal model over uh, America that it would reach there and there's other models to show it. Here's a model of the Americans. It's speeded up four times and it shows a 40-day cesium-137 uh, covering the entire northern hemisphere. But there's tons of studies out there for the air dispersals. Here's the Canadian government went out on the 19th and 20th of March 2011 and showed there was a radioactive death plume that went right along the coastline of cesium-137. Can't have cesium without 30 times more strontium-90 and strontium-90 goes into your bones, into your muscles. It's um, also other studies showing the cesium-137 and the iodine deposit and how it lingered over North America. There's a, another forecast for Xenon-133 uh, lingering over Florida, and Xenon is created uh, when the zirconium cladding burns off the fuel rods. There's 122,000 fuel rods missing in a number of different pools. Three reactors melted down, 100%. Uh, they were using, one of them was using MOX fuel, it's two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Chernobyl was one third the size of the reactors, and it was only a 30% meltdown. These are 100% meltdowns. Uh, so there's lots of models to see. Uh, it's endless. So as a scientist, I'm not sure why both times on the ocean and through the aerosol, he didn't bother going to take a few of them to use in his videos. You see, the vast majority of the radiation from this reactor stayed in the reactor for the kind of obvious reason that the reactor is a big hunk of solid stuff and that doesn't fly across the pacific too well well a small amount of it did get airborne in fires and the such like and some of it got airborne enough to get into the jet stream where it would settle out a long way from home and when the iodine settled into the sea it's entirely that expected it get sucked up by the seaweed because that's the sort of thing that seaweed does Indeed, would anyone like to hazard a guess as to where the element iodine was first discovered? Yep, you guessed it. It was first discovered in seaweed. So if you want to look for radioactive iodine, seaweed's kind of the place to look. I can't even begin to think what was going through his mind when he said that about kelp. My goodness. The radioactive water reached 3,200 kilometers east of Fukushima six months later. There's 40 billion becquels discovered in a single bed of kelp off California. You know, this is not uh, something that's not known, so why don't he know stuff like that? The New York Times confirmed there was 181 times above drinking water standards. You know, how can you miss all of that? That was April the 2nd, 2011, but that doesn't seem to matter. That doesn't bring any logic to the table for somebody. is beyond me. 
you know, radioactive rain caused 130 schools in Korea to close, and 181 times the drinking water level they just ignored. Uh, the radioactive fallout and rain is usually 10 times worse than what they're reporting. I'll explain that for you in a bit in a second here. 76 trillion becquerels of plutonium, 239, not talking about 238, 240, 241. We're not talking about uranium, 234, 235. We're not talking about the strontiums. We're not talking about the cesiums. And just 30 times more strontium for whatever you see in cesium. Uh, all of California because of those plumes you seen earlier. That was uh, April 2011 headlines. He can't find any of this in uninterrupted line of radiation stretching across the Pacific. He's a scientist, right? So what's going on here? It's not like there's a lack of models out there. There was 1,500 atoms recorded of radioactive sulfur. I mean, that means it's dear per meter. That means that stuff is dear. That's the real deal. There's a study down below about these uh, sulfur balls where they spray salt water created this phenomenon where it don't salute in the water. And then that study is below the video. It's complicated because you're dealing with one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter and it seems insignificant, but it only takes one hot particle to cause cancers. Um, and hot particles bombarded the west coast of the U.S. and Canada sustained. I mean, April 6 forecast showed radioactive clouds stretching from Texas all the way to Canada. I don't know what to say anymore to people. Uh, Fukushima's uh, nuclear pollution that hit the U.S. in 2015. And they're only looking at cesium-137. There's 30 times more strontium there. there. You know, there's uranium, there's plutoniums, all their daughters. Uh, my goodness. And so... Think about how damaging radiation is, and you absorb, you know, iodine-132, which iodine-131 converts into uh, nine times more effectively. And so iodine-131 means it's also iodine-132, but nobody bothers to mention that. And you can't create iodine-131 without create every three iodine-131 is an iodine-129. And that's, that's going to be around for 15 million year half-life. You just can't have one without the other. It's three to one. And so no matter where you've seen iodine, even little numbers, means accumulatively, then you got the 129. There's there 15 million years putting out energies. But that's emblematic of the plutonium, of the uraniums, of the cesiums. And because they sprayed salt water on these reactors, there was this phenomenon uh, where the balls are in, during, uh, the particles are ingested in the balls and become like little nuclear engines. And the hot particles is another way to look at the studies below. Uh, the forecast showing 137 and iodine. Once again, they have to travel together in the northwest because they don't, can't go their own way. It's not like iodine just came over here, nothing else. But that's what Thunderfoot seems to think people. I don't know what to make of it. He's supposed to be a scientist. It's supposed to be a scientist, and so it's heartbreaking, but there it is. And he'll find some little flaw, and then he'll be able to feel good about himself. But, he, you know, can you imagine if you had someone with that kind of skill, that kind of talent, and that kind of audience coming over to the good side, coming over and dealing with it, and so we can move on? Because, you know, so many people are going to get cancer, and they're taking all the homeless off the streets in Fukushima, uh, we should raise a fund and send him down there and see what he feels when he comes back. Take care, folks.